Hi, welcome to another Digital Photo Mentor tutorial. In this video, I'm going to walk you through using smart objects and adjustment layers inside of Photoshop so that you can do non-destructive editing. I'm going to go get set up in Photoshop and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So let me actually start by defining what is destructive and non-destructive editing. So destructive editing means that you are destroying or eliminating pixels of your actual image. We don't want that. Okay, and I'll show you an example of, of what that looks like and how to do destructive editing, but you're going to want to not do that. Okay. The other option is non-destructive editing. What that means is that when you do your changes to your image, you're doing them in such a way that they do not affect any pixels of the original image. Okay, so you're doing them on layers or masks or smart objects and things like that. So your original image and your original layer is untouched. Okay, and also I'm going to give you some tips on how to do it so that you can make changes to things that you did, say, 10 minutes ago if you decide that you want to tweak them a little bit. So I've got a few images that I've exported from Lightroom, which is my usual workflow, and I've got some JPEGs to pull into Photoshop. I'm going to start with this little image of uh, a couple of sea lines here. Okay, so we've got our seal image open here, and I want to do some um, adjustments to it in such a way that they're going to be destructive. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do is apply a levels adjustment. You can do that by hitting Command or Control L, and you'll get this little dialog box popping up. So what that's going to do is it's going to apply some contrast to the image. Turns the preview on, that's helpful. Okay, so it's going to apply some contrast. Let's see what it's doing. Okay, and apply it. So now look at what happens here. We want to take note of a couple of different things. Okay? We want to look at the layers panel in particular and the histogram. So if I do an undo, which is Command or Control Z or Z if you're in America, look at the histogram. In the original, it's a little bit squished together. After the levels adjustment, it's much more spread out or added contrast. Okay. Look at the layers panel. You'll see that I still only have one layer. Okay. And in the history panel, you see that it's now applied levels. So I've opened the image and I've applied levels. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply an unsharp mask and I'm going to take it to a place where it's really overdone okay on purpose because I don't want it to be attractive okay I want to be something that I want to fix later okay and show you that it's not possible so this is too much sharpening in case you're not sure what that looks like okay so notice still one layer okay histogram has changed a little bit and now I have added unsharp mask to the history one more adjustment I'm going to do is I'm going to go adjustments, black and white, and I'm going to apply a black and white adjustment. Maybe just change the tones a little bit. So you can adjust these sliders, which is the benefit of doing black and white this way over desaturation, um, to your liking based on the image. Okay? But the disadvantage of doing it in this way is that it is a destructive edit, meaning once I click OK, I can't go back and alter it. Okay. So I've clicked OK and now you notice that the color information is completely gone. I still have one layer. History has been added. Black and white has been added to the history. And now you can actually see that the image is still in RGB color, okay, but there's completely no color left. Okay. One last thing is if I'm going to do the crop tool um, activated by C on your keyboard, okay, I'm going to crop in a little bit to get rid of part of these other guys here and put this little face in the rule of thirds a bit more. Okay? When I've cropped in this manner and apply it, it is now destructive. Those pixels are gone forever. I cannot recover them. Okay, So these are some of the disadvantages of destructive editing. So I've done it all in one layer. I can't get it back. Okay? I, can't, I can go back in my history panel and take a step backwards. So I can go back to black and white. I can go back to Unsharp, I can go back to Levels, okay? but I can't just say, 
well, don't apply one of those things, okay? Or let me change the levels amounts. I can't do that. If I want to change it, I have to go back all the way to the beginning and start over again, okay? So that's really not the best way to do editing, okay? So I'm actually gonna go back to the beginning and start over again and do it a different way, which is non-destructively. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a duplicate layer of the background, okay? So I can do that with Command or Control J, and now you see on the layers panel, okay, there are two layers, the original and one called layer one. You could rename it if you like. I can just call it dupe layer, okay, duplicate. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply levels again, just like I did before. You can see back in the history, okay, it's still there. Okay. I am going to apply levels this time from an adjustment, okay. And there's two ways to do that. If I click on, on the adjustment panel where it says levels, it's gonna automatically do two things for me. It's gonna create a new adjustment layer called levels, and it's going to apply a mask on that, okay? It's gonna give me a mask. Okay, the other way to get to that is to go up to layer, uh, a new adjustment layer, and choose levels, okay? Much quicker to do it over here. Make sure your adjustment panel is open, okay? Now when I click on that, you see that it has now added a third layer, okay, called levels, and there is my mask, okay. To make the adjustments to the levels, it's up here under properties, so I can do the same or similar adjustments that I did before to add contrast. Okay, I'm gonna brighten up those midtones a tiny bit, okay. So let's say I kind of like that, okay. All right, so I like these adjustments, if you want to see what it's doing, now the neat thing about having it as an adjustment layer is you can turn that layer off and on. Just click the little eyeball icon next to the layer and you can see what it's doing. Okay? The benefit of having the mask available to you is that a mask allows you to show or to hide certain parts of a layer. In this case, the layer is an adjustment layer, meaning it's adding contrast. So I can decide I want to apply that contrast to all of the image and leave the mask intact, or I can hide part of it and only let the contrast come through in certain areas, which is what I'm going to do here, okay? So I've got another video that goes into more detail about masking, and I'll give you a link to that below um, the video. So I'm gonna choose my brush, and I'm gonna choose a black so I can paint in, so black, Black conceals, white reveals, okay? So black is gonna hide. So wherever I paint with black on here, make sure I have a nice soft brush. Wherever I paint with black, it's going to not apply levels. It's going to hide the levels layer, right? So it's not deleting any pixels. So again, this is another method of non-destructive editing, okay? So if I had used the eraser tool, that is destructive. If I use a mask, that is non-destructive. Okay, so see how it's removing the contrast from these areas? Uh, let's even take it away from this guy here. Okay, so I want most of the contrast application to be on the seal that I want to be the focus of the image. Okay, so now you can see what my levels layer is doing. It's not applying to the whole image. It's only applying to the bits that I tell it to. Okay? And if I hold down the shift key and click on the mask itself, what it does is it, it disables the mask to show you the entire layer. So that's the entire la layer applying to the image. That's the bit that is masked out, okay? So now I'm only applying it to our nice little C line, okay? So, so far, there's a couple of benefits of using an adjustment layer. One, we can, we can mask it out, okay? The other one is I can actually change my levels if I decide that I want more or less contrast. So now that I've masked it out, I might decide, well, here's my same settings that I had already done before. I might want some more contrast than I did originally because it's not applying to the rocks, okay? So two benefits. Next thing we did before was we applied an unsharp mask, okay? So I wanna apply that to the duplicate layer, not to the original. And before I do that, I'm actually going to do one more step. So I'm gonna turn this into what's called a smart object. So right click on it, convert to smart object, and you'll see this little icon show up in the corner here, which means that it is a smart object. So anything that I apply in terms of a filter to this layer will be then editable as well, okay? And it also will apply a layer mask. 
Just watch what happens when I do sharpening this time. Okay, so I'm going to use the same unsharp mask and I'm going to take it too far again. Okay, and I'm going to apply it, but this time we have a layer. Okay, so now you can see that unsharp mask has been applied as what's called a smart filter, okay, or a smart object. Okay, and it's editable. Okay, so all I have to do to change my settings is double click on the word unsharp mask. The dialog box comes up again and I can say, oh my goodness, I didn't do a very good job there. So let's fix that. That's much better, right? So I've changed my settings, right? And just like the levels layer, you can see that there is a mask. Okay, so if I want the sharpening to apply only to um, our fellow in the middle, right? I can paint out the edges again, or I can do it the opposite way around. Okay, so I can select the mask and do what's called invert. Okay, so that's a command or control I to turn the mask to black. So basically it's hiding the entire thing. And then I'm just going to paint in this time with white over the bits of our little C line here where I want the added sharpening. Okay, so I would just like to sharpen up his fur. Okay. And if you want to see what you're doing, you can zoom in on your image a bit more. Okay. If I decide it's not doing enough, I can go back and add some more sharpening. Okay. So completely non-destructive, completely editable. Okay, so I have the ability to change the settings for the unsharp mask filter, and I have the ability to mask it out, which I did not have before either. Okay. The last thing we did earlier, or the second last thing we did, was to apply black and white. All right, we can do the same thing again. I'm just gonna go up to the top here and I'm gonna use adjustments again and I'm gonna choose black and white. If you aren't sure what they are, just hover over them until it pops up and tells you what they are. Okay. So now again, a new layer shows up and it's called black and white. You can see that our image is now black and white and I can play with my settings to adjust how the tones appear. I like what that does to his little flipper. Okay, so sometimes you just want to slide them around and see, let's brighten up his little face. Okay, so you can decide where you like that. And the neat thing about doing black and white as a layer is all the same reasons. You can edit them anytime you want. Okay, so I can go back to levels and edit my levels. Then I can come back to black and white and still my sliders are here. You can mask it just like we did before. You can also change the opacity of the layer, okay? You can do that with any of the others as well. But look what happens when we do that to the black and white layer. Now we have kind of a soft colored image, so kind of a faded out image. So it allows you to have a very, very gentle um, black and white tone, okay? I think that's actually kind of cool. So let's just leave that somewhere in there. Okay, so very different experience from the destructive editing, okay? The last thing that we're gonna do is the cropping, okay? I'm gonna do that on our duplicate layer as well. Now this time, it gives me a choice, okay? I can delete the cropped pixels or not. So I'm gonna choose not to delete the cropped pixels because surprisingly, I can actually get them back later if I don't if I don't rasterize this, this image, okay? So if I do not um, take the smart object away, I can actually undo my cropping at any given time, okay? So if I go back to the crop tool, see my image? Still there, okay? So it's like a ghost image, right? But I can actually change my mind and redo it, okay? You can't do that if you crop it, okay? As a, as a layer by itself. So let's just review what we've learned so far, okay? Using adjustment layers instead of applying it directly to the original will allow you to not only edit the layer or edit the adjustment later, but allow you to apply a mask and to change the opacity of the layer. By using a smart object, it will also give you a mask and you can apply filters, which are then editable at any time as well, all independent of each other. Pretty cool, right? Now lastly, when you're finished with your image of this type, you've got a lot of layers going on, make sure that you do a save as, okay? So save this new image as a PSD. So a PSD is a Photoshop document. 
You can save it as a TIFF if you want. That's layers as well, but the standard is in the industry is a PSD, right? So save that as a PSD, and then anytime you want to come back and open that image at a later time, let's just do that. Okay, so let's close it. Let's go back to Bridge. Okay, so now you can see there's our original JPEG, and here's the PSD document. Let's open that PSD back up in Photoshop again. Okay, and you'll notice that all of our layers are still there. Okay, just ignore the Creative Cloud pop-up menu that we saw a minute ago. Okay, so all of the layers are still there. The only thing that you lose when you close your image and reopen it again, you'll notice that the history is now cleared out. Okay, so that's actually one of the things and one of the reasons why I like Lightroom is your history never goes away. Your history is always there forever and a day. You can close Lightroom and come back and you still have all your history. With Photoshop, you keep all of your layers. Okay? Now, a PSD document is not usable in, in the real world. You can't send that to a lab to print or you can't put it on Facebook. Okay? So you also want to make sure that you save as and save it as something like a JPEG. Okay? Um, save it as a JPEG. Maybe you want to add another a little thing at the end. Okay? I always rename so that I don't accidentally save over my original. Okay? So if you are saving an edited version, I usually just add a little suffix at the end that says edited. Okay? So when we go back to bridge again, when we close this guy, you'll see that we now have the original JPEG still untouched, uncropped, our edited JPEG, and the working document, which is the PSD. Okay? So in my workflow, if I'm working with Photoshop, I always have the original, a working file, which is the one with the layers, and then my finished one. Okay. I'll just say, show you one other quick little thing to save um, from Photoshop is if you're going to do anything online, like if you want to put this image on Facebook, as I mentioned as an example, you want to do what's called save for web. Okay. Now there's a big long keyboard shortcut, which is Command Alt Shift S. Okay. Or you can go up here to the file menu. I don't use this one very often, you could tell, because I had to search for it. Okay, so they've hidden it under the menu. So if you want to get Save for Web, it's under File, Export, Save for Web. Okay, um, I tend to just use the keyboard shortcut, okay, which is Shift, Option, Command, S. Seems like a big long one. And of course, my dialog box is on my other monitor. Okay, so it allows you to save it as a smaller file. Um, I usually make my images for online about a thousand pixels wide and you can also control the size of the image as well. So you can decide you want to um, make a smaller JPEG. What it will do is crunch it for you so the file size is not so big. Okay? So then when I do a save on this one, I'm also going to make sure that I save it as a new name. So I'll just call it a thousand PX. Okay, so whenever you save multiple copies of the same image, make sure you call them different names or have a little ending so that when you go back and look at them on your computer, you can easily see, um, as I can here, that this one is a thousand pixels, this one is the edited JPEG, this one is the original JPEG, and this one is my edited PSD. Okay. Let's do one more example. Um, I kind of have a fun one here of this guy of Cuba. So here's this fellow sitting on his on his porch in, in Cuba. And what I want to do with him is, is to do something a little funkier. So normally what I would do in Photoshop, um, if I'm pulling any images to Photoshop, it's going to be more for the Photoshop effects things, things that I can't do in Lightroom. So things that I have to have layers for. And one of those cool things is you can and combine two images together. You could do texture overlays and things like that. Now this one, I actually have a really cool image of Che Guevara that was painted on another wall. So I want to add it to this wall and pretend that it was painted on this wall. Okay, so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to File, Place, Embedded, and then just find my Che image. Where's Che? There he is. Okay. When I do that, it's going to add it with the Transform dialog box. I'm going to resize it by dragging the corner. Make sure you hold shift key down because it will keep it the right proportions. Uh, it's going to be close. We'll get close and then we'll resize it. Okay. Okay. That doesn't look so good because it's literally just plunked on top of the other one. Okay. 
it automatically does two things for you. It adds it as a new layer when you use them when you use place as embedded, and it is a smart object. Okay? So I can apply filters and things to this layer and, and edit them as we go. First thing I'm going to do is change the blend mode. Um, if you're not familiar with blend modes, I will link to a video as well on, on using blend modes and how to understand them. So this one I'm actually going to change to, let's use the multiply, okay? Because I want to make it look like this was painted on the yellow house, right? And I want to try and make it as realistic looking as possible without getting any, any complicated stuff like displacement maps, right? That's a little more advanced. So I'm going to transform it by tilting it again. So I want to kind of match the angle of the angle of this little slope here. Let's say it was painted up there. Right? Now the cool thing about doing this as a smart object, remember I said smart objects were cool, is that if I had transformed it originally and made it smaller and then decided to make it bigger, it would actually I would actually lose some pixels right? of the original image. And that's not good because then when you size it back up again, it's going to look silly. Okay. So I'm just going to make this a little bigger and then we'll crop out the bottom. So I want to kind of line it up with this window here to make it look like he's painted under the window. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. Okay. The size and the shape look good. I'm going to add a layer mask by clicking down here and I'm going to hide parts of these image. Okay. So again, um, I could erase it. Let me undo that. Okay, so I could use the eraser tool and show you what that looks like. So if I want to get rid of this here, see it won't even let me do it on a smart object. Okay, let me just make make a copy for you. And we'll get rid of it as a smart object. So if I want to use the eraser tool, okay, it's going to actually get rid of pixels. Oh, we need a much bigger brush, don't we? Much bigger, much bigger, much bigger. Oops. Okay, close enough. Okay, so it's actually going to erase pixels. And those pixels are gone forever. Okay, so let's just erase the corner of that. But let's say we make a mistake. Oops. Okay. That's what Che looks like now. So those pixels are actually gone forever. I can't un-erase them. Okay, all I can do is undo. That's it. Okay, so let's just get back to where we were. So now applying it on the smart object with a mask instead and using the brush, painting with black, okay, I can, looks like I'm erasing, right? Looks like I'm erasing, but I'm not. I'm only hiding. Okay, so anything that is painted with black what you're telling Photoshop is, I don't want that part of this layer to show in regards to the other layers below it. Okay. So I'm just going to make it kind of look a little bit more realistic. That's not so bad. Okay. And now this painting was done and look, the top of his head looks a little flat, so I might just kind of round it out a bit more. Okay. So can you see what the mask is doing? So that all the pixels are still there. The black that I've painted on the mask is just hiding them. So part of the layer from below shows through. Okay. So the other th cool thing I mentioned before is we can change the opacity of this layer. So I can fade Che out. Okay. I can change the blend mode, which we already did. Okay. I can apply, let's say, a black and white filter. Okay. Now what it does is you notice that it puts it on top and it's applying to all of the layers. If you only want your adjustment to apply to a select layer, okay, you can do what's called a clipping mask. Okay. So now there's a little trick here. If you hover your mouse in between the two layers, you see this little finger, those little hands show up. Hold down your Alt or Option key and it changes into a square with a down arrow. Okay. Click that. And you'll notice that the image not only returns to color, but there's this little down arrow that shows up. So what that means is that the black and white adjustment layer is only applying to the one directly below it, which is the Che Guevara painting, right? So you can see it's only applying to Che. And as usual, we've got all the sliders that we can play with and adjust the colors, right? So you get to decide how we want Che to look. 
I'm gonna fade them out just a little bit because I want it to look sort of sort of old. There we go. I want the man to be the focus. Okay. So if I had just taken and copied and pasted and merged those two layers together, I wouldn't have all of the flexibility that I have by using layers, masking, and smart objects. Once again, remember to save as a PSD. Okay. If you have layers, I have my Photoshop set up to default to PSD, and then I'm also gonna save a JPEG. Okay. So we can see all the things that we've done. Make sure I add my ending the name. Let's go back to bridge. Okay, now we can see we've got our original, which is this guy. We've got our edited version, JPEG, and our PSD. And of course, if we open our PSD again in Photoshop, we still have all the layers. All right. So I hope you found these tips helpful and can apply them to your Photoshop workflow so that you're able to edit in a more non-destructive manner. Happy editing and we'll see you next time. Take care.